Good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, Northwest LLS uh, Q&A Smoko session. Apologies for the delay, but uh, it just wouldn't be normal if we didn't have a couple of te technical difficulties. Um, this morning, uh, we're going to have a bit of a yarn about Park Lenny and Bleed and what all the fuss is about. So, uh, presented by myself, Pete Dawson, and uh, Phil Blackmore, who's the State Priority Voice Coordinator with New South Wales BPI, based out of Armada. I'd just like to start by acknowledging the country. So, Yama, welcome to Gnurunui country. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians on the land in which we meet today and where this presentation is being made. And I pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging. So, my name's Pete Dawson. I'm the uh, Regional Lead Coordinator for Northwest Local Land Services. And as I said, uh, joined this morning uh, by Phil Blackmore. So, morning, Phil. Good morning. Right, uh, quickly, uh, quick overview, I guess. What is Parthenium weed? Where does it come from? Why is it such an issue to us and how it affects us? What does it look like? Because there are a few lookalikes out there in the landscape, uh, particularly in those smaller rosette stage. Uh, where it's found and the current distribution, I guess, across uh, the state and the northwest LS region. Some of the uh, main spread vectors, uh, control options. We'll touch on the biosecurity duty uh, around Parthenium weed and what to do and who to contact if you think you might have it. And then we'll have some time for some uh, questions later on. But uh, you can pose some questions as we're tracking uh, and uh, we'll get to those and hopefully we can give you a uh, the correct answer. So, Phil, um, what's Parthenium weed? Where's it from? Uh, Parthenium weed is it's an annual Asteraceae, that is daisy family plant. Uh, it comes from the Caribbean uh, sort of region, Central America, uh, north of South America, uh, and a, a bit in sort of bottom end of the USA. Uh, it's an annual plant. Uh, it grows to about uh, one to one and a half metres in height. Um, before the biocontrol programs in, were in Queensland, uh, used to grow up to two metres in height, but we don't see them that high these days. Uh, it's a, quite an erect plant, uh, much branched uh, with deeply lobed, lobed alternate leaves. It's got a particular pale green colour and the foliage is covered with fine soft hairs. Uh, small creamy white composite flowers. Um, it's a weed of national significance and uh, the plant must not be sold anywhere in, in Australia. Or, or given away. Or, or given away. Uh, look, it could, it could be confused, I suppose, with baby's breath. Uh, when you see the flowers, I like to see. I like to think that the flowers look like if you imagine a, a big, a big solitaire diamond ring. Um, yeah, you can't say that it's green. <laughs> <laughs> you know, two or three carrots. You like, not like you'd see on on anyone's finger, but certainly you might see one in the jeweler's shop. Uh, so it's it's that sort of size, and and the. The petals, very shrunken little petals, there's five of them and they look around the edge and they look a bit like the clasps. All right, well, that's that's good background. We, we'll have a look at some of the tree like leaf features. But uh, one of the things we're curious about is uh, how it got here. How it, it got here uh, in 1958, it's almost certainly known, uh, it was accidentally imported in. Uh, buffalo grass seed imported uh, from Texas into the USA, into central Queensland in 1958. Uh, it spread around central Queensland during the Brigalow Development Scheme in the 1960s. Uh, didn't, no one took much notice of it. It was probably uh, still only an ephemeral for those years. And then in the mid 1970s, there were there was a La Nina period, a, a period of really wet years, and all of a sudden it was everywhere. So like a lot of those things, it was just a sleeper in the landscape. Yep. Yeah, yeah. There was there was quite a at least 15 year lag phase, 
uh, and and then away it went. Uh, today, there's at least uh, 18 million hectares affected by parthenium weed in Queensland, with still some very dense infestations. Uh, look, the, the, the WANS program in particular did a lot of good work to try and contain it into central Queensland, but it is slowly spreading into southern Queensland uh, because there's a fair bit of trade between Queensland and New South Wales. We do get incursions in New South Wales over time. Um, we've seen quite a few this season. Uh, not surprising with uh, with hay movements in particular during the, the drought year last year. Okay. So why is it an issue, Phil? I mean, what's, what's the issue with it? Look, it's, uh, it's, it's extremely invasive. Uh, it grows extremely quickly. Um, in, in, in particular circumstances, it will grow from, can grow from germinate uh, and be producing flowers and viable seed within 28 days of germination. Uh, that's how that's how rapidly it, it will grow, uh, but in that that's under under sort of more difficult situation where it might be a bit drought stressed. Um, in a better season, it'll just grow and produce seed right through the summer period, uh, through to about Easter, when it might easily a single plant might easily produce 10,000 seeds. Yeah, look, it, it's it's not only a problem. It's not only a problem in in Queensland, uh, and in, you know, becoming a problem to northern New South Wales. Uh, it, about the same time it was imported into uh, into Australia, it was also introduced accidentally into uh, into India. It's now spread right across India to Pakistan. Uh, it's a huge problem in Pakistan. Uh, it grows in the sort of more tropical areas, well, the, the uh, sort of the more equatorial areas of, of Pakistan, but also um, it will survive under the snow line uh, during winter and then come away in the spring. It's also a major problem in, in South Africa uh, and Israel, believe it or not, uh, and in Ethiopia. Oh, terrific. So it's uh, nice to get around. Okay, so like what you can see on the slide at the moment is a small, uh, a small plant there on the, the left hand side. And I guess like any of these things, from little things, we know that uh, they can soon get a spread on, as we saw, uh, spreading quite happily through Queensland through the 60s and 70s before it really became much of an issue. Um, some of the other problems with it. Well, it'll outcompete uh, a lot of plants in, in drought affected pastures. Um, it, it has this uh, capacity called allelopathy. And what that means is it, it releases sort of natural plant-based herbicides into the soil that suppress the growth of other plants, particularly grasses. Uh, it'll, and because of that, it reduces carrying capacity uh, it can cause livestock health problems if they're forced to eat it, if there was nothing else. Um, some animals are more affected than others. Horses, of course, much more affected than, uh, than sheep, uh, but um, it, it can cause toxicity to, to a degree. Uh, competes with crop seedlings, including sunflowers and sorghum. Uh, reduces crop yields. Uh, it'll contaminate grain and it's a host for crop viruses. It is, it's fantastic, yes. And that's what we don't want to see. No, that is certainly not. That's that's typical of the infestations that, that appeared in central Queensland uh, in the mid 1970s. What about human health? Well, we know that it's, it's got some pretty dramatic impacts for. Well, as, as well as being a weed of agriculture, uh, it also can cause severe uh, respiratory problems and particularly dermatitis in humans. And so if you, if you suspect you have a plant, uh, avoid touching it uh, and 
use a dust mask if you have to work near the weed. Um, over time, you can people who have to live in areas where parthenium weed is well established can develop allergies uh, to uh, to parthenium weed, uh, both skin and and uh, respiratory allergies. Uh, certainly, uh, uh, the the lead researcher in the biocontrol program wasn't allergic at all uh, when she started the program, uh, but after ten years, she was. So it can develop, and you can also develop people who are particularly allergic can can develop uh, cross allergies. You know, so if if they develop an allergy to parthenium weed, they can also develop allergies to other uh, Asteraceae species as well. Oh, there's there's no, you know, it's for some people. They just can't, uh, you know, for the for the sake of their their health, they have no option but to but to pack up and go somewhere where there's no parthenium weed. What about livestock? What are sort of things with that? Look, live livestock generally won't eat parthenium weed if there's other feed available. Uh, it, it's it, they're not attracted to it in any way. Uh, they really that that picture where there's nothing else in the paddock. Obviously, uh, you know, the stock for the sake of keeping alive might be forced to eat it, but they generally won't eat it. Uh, and that that's one of the big effects, particularly on the cattle industry. Um, there's not only lost production, but there's foregone production. Uh, to avoid a situation like that happening in a paddock, you uh, a, a producer will have to reduce the number of of stock that the paddock could could feasibly carry uh, to stop the parthenium weed from taking over, from dominating. Yeah. And so obviously, yes, you can see on the slide there, we've got some notes about you know, some of the peak damage. Yeah, there. look, it can cause kidney damage. Again, again, stock are, are generally unwilling to, to eat it, uh, but they, you know, if they're not given any choice, they certainly will. Um, it, it, as well as causing kidney, kidney damage, it, it will taint uh, meat and milk uh, of livestock. Uh, and thin-skinned animals like horses can have an allergic reaction to, uh, so dermatitis uh, and phytosensitization reactions to parthenium weed as well. Nasty stuff. Okay, so what does it look like? How do we, how do we spot this little critter out here in the landscape? Uh, Look, it's it's a particular colour of pale green, and particular colour because it's got these soft, fine hairs, which which sort of change the colour a bit. Uh, the lower leaves, five to twenty centimetres long, deeply divided. Uh, upper leaf, the leaves less divided, smaller, fine, soft hairs, as we say. Uh, most leaves die after the plant flowers, although the plant uh, the plant will start to flower uh, not long. It doesn't. It doesn't have a long uh, rosette stage like a lot of other species do. What about the flowers? I mean, those are distinct uh, flowers. It's real characteristic. Isn't it? Well, there's the flowers um, that we talked about before. You know, looking a bit like the, you know, the the big the big solitaire engagement ring. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I've, I've only I've only ever seen them in in in, in jeweler shops too, jeweler's windows, um, but they certainly exist. Um, they they occur at the at the terminal end of the stems, so they um, they they're not along the stem; they're at the end of the stem, so they're up at the top of the plant, um, and they're often in clusters, and have they have that five those five like five clasps, if you imagine, they're the, they're the, the shrunken petals. Oh, look at, look, yes, it, it, it could look a bit like baby's breath if you wanted to look like that. I haven't got any photos of seeds, but just roughly there. Oh, look, we're talking one to two millimetres. Yeah, they're, they're quite, they're, they're fine, fine-ish seed. I mean, they're not tiny, you know, there are some weed species have smaller seeds than that. They're sort of triangular though. 
Uh, it's not often that people see uh, see seeds. Um, you know, in, in Queensland, you might see some seeds in a in a grain sample, possibly, uh, but it's not often that seeds are seen. Uh, the the stems are a particularly identifying characteristic. Unlike a lot of similar species, they don't have a round stem. It's got a grooved or ridged stem, uh, and it becomes quite woody with age. Yeah, reasonably deep. Um, being a being an annual annual species, they they will try and put down you know get down as as deep as they can to. Uh, you know, to survive right through the summer. Sure. Now, we've got a few lookalikes as well. Yeah. Now, Parthenium weed is is related to the ragweeds, and for for quite a while it was referred was called ragweed, or um, I think in, in the United States it's also called white top. Um, uh, it's a bit different from ragweed in that ragweed uh, gets quite large before it starts to flower. Uh, and that's and that's one of the main differences. You won't see those little white flowers even on quite large ragweed plants. You won't see any flowers. You know, you can have quite a large ragweed plant. And ragweed has round stems, not not those grooved or ridged stems. Okay. Now, one of the other, I guess, out there, we're, we're talking about right beaters, but there's a whole lot of common names, I guess, for you know. Cobbler's peg and uh, yeah, it's the it's the it's the the inland form. Biden's uh, Biden subalternans, uh, as opposed to the coastal form with the sort of diamond shaped leaf, which is Biden's pilosa. Where is lace? Now that's another one that some uh, people may it it think of. certainly because of the white flowers. Um, now, uh, Queen Anne's lace is is an umbel, uh, you know, an umbel, um, like an umbrella, uh, and the the um, the flowers are suspended by these like umbrella struts. So that that how that's you know, it's really only the white flowers that that might make it look a bit similar. Uh, the flowers are really quite different once you start to look at them. And another one, uh, people will see around. So potentially hemlock, which is another. Yeah, certainly, cert yeah, certainly hemlock, um, particularly on on waterways. Um, again, again, hemlock is an umbel. It's got those sort of umbrella struts supporting the flowers. Uh, hemlock has also got round stems, and it's got these often has these red streaks uh, along along the stems as well, uh, which uh, sort of uh, identify it. But there's quite a different plant from path anyway. So whereabouts are we finding it? Um, look, we over the over the years since the first outbreak was found in 1982 in New South Wales, we found plants uh, from from Bogabilla to uh, the Victorian border. Um, but in in certainly in the last uh, in the last this season that we've just gone through, uh, we've found plants, uh, especially in the northern part of the state, nor uh, this area, northwest, um, uh, Cropper Creek, uh, Tamworth, uh, along the roadsides down to Forbes, Parks, um, we haven't, uh, and, and some outbreaks in areas with, which we haven't seen before. Uh, the Upper Hunter, uh, also uh, Mid North Coast over near Nambucca. Central Coast, I think. Yeah, well, one in Sydney. We've never we've never seen Parthenium weed in Sydney before. Any particular environment that it prefers? Or quite happy to go. Uh, look, it it it's obviously being a summer grower. Uh, it it does prefer um, sort of black soils. Uh, you know, like sort of uh, that we see in the yeah prime farming. Well, in the, in the yeah, that's right. In the best farming country, you know, that's certain certainly there in the Golden Triangle. Uh, you know, Moree, uh, Narrabri, all those, those sort of uh, quite deep alkaline black soils. However, like a lot of weeds, 
that's its preference. Um, it will it will grow just about anywhere. Yeah. No. Look, this is um. This is one of my one of my maxims after years in the words business. Um, when a when a uh, a new word turns up and some uh, so uh, the worst thing a, either a, a producer or a, or a words officer can hear is some expert saying, "Don't worry, this stuff won't grow here." Never believe it. <laughs> um, okay, let's have a quick look at um, distribution. So this is our fishnet mapping from 2008. Um, and obviously there is a known sort of incursion areas and we can see there that um, I guess we had some historical data around Moree, some of those western areas, the odd incursion down south there. But just moving through to this season, um, we know that we've had a multitude, and I think you can see there, there's 20 odd incursions, known incursions that have been identified this season. Uh, and I just want to show people if you're looking at the, uh, the screen there, you'll see uh, there's some public maps and records that are available there. Uh, we can throw the links up later on. Uh, but if you want to have a closer look in finer detail as to where these incursions are, uh, this won't go down to property scale. It only goes down to a, a local district scale. But you can see uh, that this year we've had 20 odd incursions right across northern New South Wales, basically from central west all the way up, including Sydney. So uh, it's out there in the landscape, folks. We need to keep our eyes open for it. So what's its key spread vectors, Bill? Uh, one of the advantages of Parthenium weed from a control point of view is it, it only spreads by seed. Uh, and, that, and that seed doesn't have any particular uh, means to assist it in spread. You just know, so it doesn't have a pappus, you know, it doesn't make it wind spread. So it's not wind spread. The way it spreads yeah. is by, um, in, in nature, is it grows along waterways and as the plants die at the end of the season, uh, the, 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 the stems with seed attached uh, can be snapped off by any by flood flow down a stream. Uh, and then carried further down, further down the stream, and then they spread sideways out of the stream from that point. Um, usually dragged along by livestock, uh, you know, mud in in the feet of livestock uh, can be a main main source. So how does it get from Queensland into New South Wales? Uh, not by nature. Um, the the biggest spread, the biggest area that we know of. Uh, in Queensland that's in the Murray-Darling Basin is upstream of St George. So it's, it's a long way away from New South Wales in a river at this stage. How it gets into New South Wales, uh, in the past, our, our biggest vector has been harvesting machinery by far, uh, but new vectors in, in more recent years have been hay, particularly drought hay, uh, grain, um, we certainly seen uh, over the years many, many more incursions along roads than we have on private property. And, and of course, they just come off a vehicle of some sort, probably a truck, but who knows what, you know, they're just along the vehicle. But also uh, other vehicles, you know, we've, we've seen a few incursions from, uh, from air suiters from, from central Queensland that have been brought into New South Wales and not cleaned before they get here. Uh, and one of the most recent ones is whole grain poultry feed, particularly uh, organic, organically produced whole grain poultry feed. Now that's, this is a new vector that, that we hadn't really anticipated. Uh, and, and it's the source of, of these uh, incursions that are outside the areas that we've not seen it before. So uh, Wyong, uh, Sydney and Nambucca. Uh, so, yeah, they've, 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 they've all this, this, this organic chicken feed. Well, I can't think that people be aware of, I guess, in the future things. I'm sure something we can pull up, we can wash down. Uh, Head, look, headers, headers uh, were a major source uh, until uh, until the, the quarantine at the Queensland border, 
where headers are required to be uh, to be cleaned before they enter New South Wales, which is still very much in place, uh, especially with the with the harvest just getting underway. So headers are required to to be cleaned before they uh, at or before they get across the border into New South Wales, and and then operators of those headers are required to present them for inspection before they enter New South Wales. Uh, so we talk about control options for a lot of ways, but control in particular, uh, we don't necessarily want people rushing out there and controlling it. Really. Look, we we would much prefer uh, to that that if you if you think you might have parthenium on your property, that you don't try and control it yourself, um, because there's there is a fair risk that that uh, it will just continue to spread. Um, Please, uh, please report it on the biosecurity helpline if you can, uh, or, or report it to to your uh, local weeds officer. Or um, yes, report it to your local weeds officer. That's that's the best way. Uh, and then there will, will be a, a, a full response from the DPI uh, with local government support uh, to control that incursion. Yeah. We just touched earlier on sort of prevention of cleaning. So cleanliness, I guess, is uh, is one of the, the critical things with machinery and vehicles. And you spoke about uh, compulsory inspections for harvesting machinery entering New South Wales. So it's it's certainly harvesting machinery, but only grain harvesters, not not cotton pickers or other, you know, hay making machinery. Any machinery that's been in central Queensland should be cleaned uh, before it leaves that area before it comes into even into southern Queensland. Um, vehicles, the, there was a case a number of years ago where uh, a commercial traveller uh, who used to travel regularly into, into central Queensland had a parthenium weed come up, plant come up in his driveway in Tamworth. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah. The, <laughs> that's right. That's where it popped up, exactly. Yeah, so vehicle. Vehicle hygiene is important, and not just vehicles. Things like uh, things like air suiters. Uh, you know, if you're going to change the points on the on the scarifier before uh, before the machine comes in, you know, it's best that that's done in Queensland rather than before it's brought into New South Wales. So checking the plants. Um, you know, there's some, I guess. Where are the areas we should be looking? We've just been through a pretty ordinary dry spell uh, for the last few years. There's been a lot of hay, fodder, grains, and that moved around the countryside. Um, and obviously, we've had a fairly bad landscape. Uh, now, recent rains, we know that there's going to be a plethora of, uh, of annual weeds popping up. Um, that's fine. But it's probably pretty important to check some of these, these feed out areas. Certainly, look. Parthenium weed is ex still extremely rare in New South Wales. Uh, so, it, you know, there is not seed in the environment. It has to have been, it has to have been introduced in by some means, by some mechanism, either by uh, machinery or vehicles or earth moving machinery, possibly, uh, you know, working on an easement of some sort, electricity easement. Something like that, yeah. or uh, uh, um, particularly even in in spite of the the, the harvest, the, you know, the harvester protocol. Um, always have a look in in harvested paddocks. Uh, certainly, certainly the next year, the following year after a, a crop's been harvested by a, a harvester that's come from Queensland. Um, Feed out areas. If you've if you've fed out any any hay uh, that's that's come from Queensland, uh, and particularly any of the the sort of through uh, um, the fodder drive, fodder, fodder drives in particular. Uh, you know some of the some of the hay there was was perhaps um, especially as as the as the drought was became extremely difficult, extremely tight. Uh, you know some of the hay was a not the best quality, uh, and and some of that hay certainly did come from Queensland. Okay. So 
you can see on the slide there, folks, just check all those areas. Um, and also anywhere where seeds and boarding, um, including chooks, as we've been. Uh, Chooks, yeah, really chook ever. feed. Certainly, it's certainly, uh, certainly. If you if you've been buying feed, uh, and you've been feeding your chooks in just in your normal fowl house, you know, um, just at home, doesn't have to be a poultry farm. Could just be a, a fowl house. If certainly, certainly, check around where you where you feed your your, your chickens. Okay. Getting on to some of the control options that we do have available to us, um, there are. Uh, registered herbicides that are available. Uh, as we've said, please don't try and control this yourself. It is prohibited matter, so it is notifiable. Um, but there's chemical control options available there. Uh, you can have a look at the New South Wales uh, DPI uh, weed control handbook. We touched earlier briefly on bio control or biological control tool. Where's, where's that up to? Yeah, uh, in the, the sort of 19. 80s, 90s, early 2000s, there was a huge biological control program. Uh, 10 agents were released on, on Parthenium weed. Uh, a normal biocontrol program would be lucky to see two agents on a single species. So this was, this was a massive program. Uh, it, is, it is a difficult species to target uh, for biological control. Um, being an annual species, uh, it, you know, it can be a feast or a famine, and particularly in Queensland, which tends to have um, what I like to call a Mackella area in the climate of droughts and flooding rains. So, mm -hmm. so you know, you can have uh, you know several years of drought and then then several very wet years, and and it's a real challenge for biological control agents to to survive those dry years. They certainly, they do survive, but it then takes them a while to build up. Well, certainly in New South Wales, um, you know, we can eradicate the target. Um, we won't be focusing in recent sessions on bio control, but uh, we'll leave that up to Queensland. We'll see, uh, and we can get back to block down forward. That's right. We, we've, we've, our, the first incursion in New South, in New South Wales was in 1982. And after all that time, we still don't have any established populations of Parthenium weed in New South Wales. I want to touch briefly on this whole food biosecurity act and what more biosecurity might be. Uh, we know that all landholders uh, have a, a general biosecurity view uh, in, in New South Wales, which is basically to, you know, to ensure that a risk is prevented or eliminated or minimised. So when we talk about something about prohibited matter, what does that mean? Uh, a plant is prohibited, can be prohibited matter. Well, the Biosecurity Act applies not just, applies to, to all biosecurity uh, matter. So uh, pests, diseases, weeds, uh, insect pests, um, Pests like you know rabbits, pigs, yeah, pathogens. Uh, pathogens yeah. uh, you know it's it's universal. So there are there's lists of prohibited matter, and there's also included in that list is a list of prohibited weeds. Now to be on that prohibited matter list, uh, those weeds uh, cannot be established in New South Wales, uh, and so Parthenium weed is on that prohibited matter list. Uh, as, as well as the general spy security duty, there's an extra duty, and that is uh, that if if you suspect you have uh, Parthenium weed on your on your property, uh, you are required to notify uh, your weeds officer uh, or through that by the biosecurity helpline, uh, uh, either of those. Now that duty not only applies to landholders and producers, it also uh, also uh, applies to people working in a professional capacity. So uh, agronomists also have that duty uh, uh, and you know other other people who you know as public servants or who, who might be working in in that capacity uh, working with plants if they suspect, they, they've seen parthenium weed growing in New South Wales, 
uh, they have a duty under the Biosecurity Act to notify that incursion. So we touched briefly on uh, machinery in and making sure machinery was going. Uh, there is, a, I think, such as um, a prohibition on dealings, but in regards to the grain industry, uh, particularly headers and that, uh, we know that uh, as, as long as it's been thoroughly cleaned down in Queensland, it's presented at the border in Queen's State, uh, and we're talking about the, the, the headers and the cone fronts in particular, uh, the, the comb trailers, uh, they need to be inspected uh, before entry. Uh, and things, similar things like augers, um, bins, what, what's the deal with bins and, and support vehicles? Look, they, they also need to be cleaned. So augers, similar equipment, uh, grain bins, field bins, uh, sort of pilot vehicles uh, that have been driven in the paddock to support harvest operations, uh, a low loader that could be carrying a header, uh, and and slightly differently, uh, drill rigs, mineral exploration drill rigs that have operated in, in Queensland, they're all required to be cleaned before they are brought into New South Wales, but unlike headers, they're not required to, although that equipment's not required to be inspected. It's only headers, uh, and including the comb, that has to be inspected before it comes into New South Wales. And, and that's really great. The, the, the risk is much greater from headers. So, who's it a contact? If I think I've seen it or I've got it on my phone. So, if, if you think you've, uh, you've found it on your property, uh, get on the phone to your local government weeds officer uh, or call the New South Wales uh, DPI Biosecurity Helpline. Okay, um, that's great. Yeah, there are some additional resources and information available out there apart from the landscape. Uh, as we mentioned, the uh, Weed Control Handbook. Uh, there's also the WeedWise app, which is a, a terrific little phone app and put on your, your, your smart ass phone or your tablet. That's it. And, um, jump in there and that'll sort of help now, identify. Now don't be don't be afraid to uh, to send in pictures. We like we love pictures. Good you know good quality pictures that you can just do on your phone. Uh, don't be afraid to send us uh, uh, pictures of suspected plants. We'd rather have 10 false reports than than to miss out on, on a real one. There's one little web link there uh, folks which is you just jump up to the, they're going to behave for me. Let's see if that. Oh, thinking, no, it doesn't want to play the game, but jump on the DPI, uh, the Weeds website there, or uh, we'll go to Weedwise, and um, there's some really good resources and information available. There. Um, all right, have we got any key questions? that we want answered at the moment. All right. Um, folks, thanks very much for your time. Phil, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Thanks, and, Bert. And uh, we uh, just like to say thanks to uh, the New South Wales DPI uh, Weeds Action Program and our Regional Weed Committee, and uh, also obviously uh, New South Wales Government being DPI and local land services. Have fun out there, folks, and please keep your eye out. And as Phil said, we'd rather have a thousand false alarms than complacency. Thanks very much.